Welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith. Today we got a pretty good piece of iron here. And we're getting ready to set it up on the K&T. And we're going to be doing some milling and drilling. And we're going to be changing out some of the material on this beast here with a piece of coal roll plate that we got. <clears throat> and repair the broken out area. This is a uh, vertical slide for a milling center, I believe, is what it is. A uh, CNC machine. And... Our customer, Roland, we're just gonna first name basis here, Roland. Roland brought us the, uh, the lead screw, the nut. He's got this all taped up and everything else so we don't lose the balls in it. But we'll be able to uh, set this up so that we have proper mounting for this. Somehow along the way, before he bought it, the original customers had a mishap with it, extended past the travel or something, and popped two pieces of casting off of here and here's a close photo of that when I had it down on the crate before I started picking it up and deciding I was going to do a video on this uh, on this uh, repair here. Okay, I'm going to set the lead screw off uh, to the side here for right now. All right, we're going to be milling this little section right in here, and we know that sometimes when we face with our cutter, we we have a little back cut going on. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to really tram in our head or actually I, I say tram in our head because you used to tram it in your head on your bridge port to make it square with the table but here we need to adjust the table so that we're square with the cut um, we'll dial this part into the table and then we'll have to verify the sweep or the run out of the face of the spindle to the part itself and we're gonna dial that in so that we don't have any mismatch on our cut we're going to go ahead and take and we're going to do the hogging out with a two inch shell mill. So we're, we're going to be about a four inch width uh, approximately for our area we're going to take. And we're going to take it down a half inch deep. Uh, and then we're going to modify this hole pattern so that we're joining this coal roll plate in nice and tight and snug. And also adding strength to the mounting for that, that nut on the lead screw. All right. So I'm going to get this slid over. We're a little proud on the bottom here, so I'm going to be playing around whether I'm going to be overhanging it or setting it up on parallels. And uh, so I'm going to be dinking around with it a little bit here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll bring you back in when I have it all made up and I decide what to do uh, and how I'm holding it. I'll bring you in. Then we'll go through setting it up, dialing it in, and getting this ultimately close so that we can perform the work needed so we have a nice clean uh, mount for that ball uh, nut screw uh, on here. All right. All right, I got this setting down on here hard, and the overhang is, oh, it probably about an inch and quarter or so uh, sticking out, inch and three eighths. And I want to, we don't know exactly turning this and that surface is kind of rough there. So we're just kind of giving ourselves, we, we look like we're pretty even within a 32nd of an inch here to here right now. And what I did is I came off the table here, nine and a half, and that's like four, uh, three quarter to five, depending on, you know, where you're going to have the bit at. So that's going to leave us enough for the size drilling that we're going to be doing in here. So... I think we're going to be happy with running it on our table. Now, the balancing point of this is just about where it's at on the table. I could un I could release it, but I'm going to go ahead and start getting toe clamps on here, and then we'll come up in the air and we'll get it on close, and then we'll start playing with it. All right, let's let's go ahead and bring her on up. We're going to look for a straight path across here to where we can we can run all the way out to this outside edge to that outside edge over there and read that face as we move the table back and forth. I went and got my uh, uh, Sterrett mag base Sterrett indicator. This is an oldie here. I've, I've fried a lot of uh, chips on the top of that uh, plastic there. Uh, I've probably had that, uh, that, that lens um, hanging around since about 1983 or so 
uh, and I found it in a box. This indicator didn't have a face on it when I got it. Uh, anyway, I went ahead and grabbed my ring with all my indicator contact tips there and put a fatty on here because we're going to be going across a couple uh, uh, little uh, channels that are milled out on that face there and we'll be able to go from side to side. So let's go ahead and see what we got from side to side. I'm going to zoom you in here. Alright, that looks like a good combination. Okay, we're going to start with zero here. Okay, we're about 40. My, or we're minus 60 there. <clears throat> now I'm going to tap on this side here because we, we're, we're overhanging and I don't want to be banging that back into the table there. This is my rawhide mallet. Alright, so I'm going to give it zero. I'm just going to take it back to just about where I think it should be. Now we'll go zero it back out. We'll come back over here and we'll see where we're at. Okay, we're minus 10 there. All right, now I'm gonna tighten this other side here a little bit more than it was, and I'm gonna lightly loosen this side here <clears throat> so I can give this just a light tap here. Hopefully not move the other side. It looks like we're about plus one there. I'm going to zero this out here. There's zero. Plus three. Let's see if I'm tight. Just making sure the indicator is not sticking or anything's coming loose there. Okay, that's what I thought. Something was underneath there. All right, we're going to run it back and forth a couple times and just make sure that we maintain that zero. And we don't have something funky going on with our indicator. It looks pretty good there. We're going to snug this clamp down here. Alright, we went ahead and locked our carriage in and out. And uh, we can find that our adjustment is satisfied with it making it all the way across here. And all the way back and maintaining our zero. Okay, we've swiveled it and we've locked it down, and we're able to come and sweep zero zero both sides. These adjustments down here are like a tapered pin, and they, they lock a wedge in on a dovetail circle underneath here. Been a long time since I did, over 20 years since I've had this thing apart. Um, but I was able to back them loose and uh, swivel it, lock them back down. Uh, it's pretty pretty good feeling. Um, sooner or later, I'll, I'll probably have to tear this one down again, just to clean out the coolant passages. The coolant from the table goes down through this whole thing and on down through the tube on the side. And it's a good idea to go ahead and pull that apart, clean it up, and just kind of uh, get get the rust out of the inside of it there. 
because it travels around all of the uh, moving and locking parts of that swivel there. All right, um, I think we're, we're ready to set up our shell mill. Okay, I'm going to fire it off and then I'm going to bring it in and I'm going to touch the surface and I'm going to set my dial to zero. Then I'm going to come up above this and our first cut's going to be straight down. All right. I'm going to I'm going to touch without rotating because I got my table is nice and free and glides so I can easily crank this in and touch. And I go ahead and take and set my dial right to zero. And then I can come up, or actually bring the table down, but put the cutter above. Okay. Alright, I'm going to zoom you in. Right about there. Now we'll get about 490 is going to be our finished depth. I'm not sure how this is going to go or what it's going to take, but I, I cranked in a hundred thousands. All right. Right now, I have it about half an inch, but I'm going to bring it on up and touch off by hand here first. All right, I'm touching. All right, I'm gonna put it in feed. This is a half inch a minute feed rate. It's not much, I'm gonna crank it up. There's one inch a minute. That feels pretty sound. Looks pretty good. Move it up. There's an inch and three eighths a minute. Ah, right, you can start hearing the load. Starting to get a little pile of chips down in the bottom. I get asked a lot about my sight gauge here on the side of the mill. This is to let you know it's flowing. The lower one actually tells you the limit. So sometimes you'll see the stop to the spindle stopped or the motor stopped and no oil flowing out of there and that's why.
All right. Uh, late yesterday, before we knocked off there, we went, we cut down. We came over here and we cut up. And right in the center between the two was a little raised area. You can't, you couldn't, you could feel it from both sides. So I went straight down the middle and I stopped it right there at the end of the day. And I was real happy because I can't, I can see the mark. I can see where it was cutting different than here and here. But there's, <clears throat> there is no, no height difference. And uh, I feel real good about that. What I'm going to do now is uh, our first cut of the day. This is, this is uh, 100 thousandths deep here. And we're going to take this to uh, 490 deep. And um, uh that's that's going to be the depth of of this this section and i also took and i measured across here and we are we are right at four inches within a, th a thousands or so and um i'm real happy I mean, we, we just kind of planned that out this is a two inch cutter and that's why we had the little line in here it's just because of the little radius on the end of the inserts here uh, created a raised area and that's why I went down so we're gonna we're gonna engage another hundred thousands and uh, it's cutting it's cutting real nice it's bringing a nice chip there's no race uh, we're not we're not creating a, a major heat and we're not throwing a lot of dust we have this here to catch the ductile iron and uh, you can see here there's a magnet underneath here so some of it's flying in there and sticking to that and making it look like a hairy uh, wig there uh, so you know just kind of letting you know what's going on because I got magnets uh, sticking this up tight so that uh, we don't get any of this uh, debris in on our ways um, and, and other than that and that's another reason why I don't run coolant on ductile iron is because I don't want that to go into the coolant and then distribute it through everything on the whole machine uh, all right so let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna start off by just engaging another hundred thousands on our depth and we're going to go straight up um, the middle here and then we're going to go down that side and up this side here uh, and we're going to look at our pattern uh, for the blending of the cuts uh, that way as well just kind of deciding how we want to do it for our <clears throat> for our finished cut before we get down to it 